So this is a question that's been asked over and over again among music lovers. Is it better to have digital music encoded at 16 bits or 24 bits per sample? There are a lot of audio enthusiasts who swear that 24-bit audio captures more detail and just sounds better, but others say that 16-bit audio is good enough and you can't really tell the difference anyway. Well, after hearing this debate about bit depth go back and forth for a while, curiosity got the better of me and I decided to do my own little test to see if I could tell the difference between music files encoded at 16 bits and 24 bits per sample. So here's what I did. I had just recorded a digital transfer of one of my records, Paul McCartney's album Tug of War. I decided to create two versions of it, one in 16-bit FLAC files, and the other in 24-bit FLAC files. Now, since Audacity, my recording software, stores the raw audio at a bit depth of 32 bits floating point, we can be sure that it is exporting files that are really 24-bit and 16-bit. So, now we can open up the files in FUBAR 2000, and right away we can see the difference between a 16-bit and 24-bit music file. The bitrate on the 24-bit file is almost twice as high, and the file size is almost twice as big. This makes sense, of course, since a 24-bit file has to include 50% more information in every sample than a 16-bit file. But will all that extra information make a difference in the quality of the sound? Well, the only way to find out is to listen to them. So I put together my own crude blind listening test. I queued up both versions of one song from the album at a time in the playlist, then set the playback settings to random. I looked down so I couldn't see which file was playing on the screen, then hit the play shortcut on my keyboard. Good morning. Good morning. I listened to each file without knowing which one was playing. I should also note the audio setup I was using. I was listening to this through a FIO Olympus 2 DAC set to output audio at 24 bits, 96 kilohertz quality, as well as my pair of Sennheiser HD558 headphones. Now I'm going to try and give you a chance to do this blind listening test yourself, but I'm not sure if you'll actually hear 24 bit audio because YouTube might downsample the audio. At any rate, here's a brief clip from the song Ballroom Dancing, originally in two different versions, one in 16-bit, one in 24-bit. You won't know which version is which until afterwards. See if you can tell one from the other. Did you hear a difference? The first clip was 24-bit, and the second clip was 16-bit. But don't worry if you couldn't tell. Even with my amp set to the highest resolution 24-bit output, which it normally is anyway, I couldn't reliably tell the difference between a 16-bit and a 24-bit track when I played them side by side. Sometimes I thought the 16-bit version was the 24-bit version, and other times vice versa. My ears couldn't tell them apart. After that, I thought, maybe there's a difference in the audio signal that I'm just not hearing. So I used a program called SPEC to analyze the frequency spectrum of each file, to see if I could see rather than hear a difference. Well, after running the files through the program, it turns out there is. And just so you know, these graphs show frequencies in the file over time. Along the x-axis, we have time, the y-axis shows frequencies up to 24 kilohertz, and the colors show amplitude or volume, reds being loudest and deep blues being quietest. Here we see the spectrogram of the 16-bit file of the song Tug of War. We can see immediately that the range of sound in the song is represented nicely, but one of the first things I noticed is this cloud of high-frequency sound in the top end from about 18 kHz to 24 kHz. 
As you can see, it looks almost like static. When I looked at the spectrogram of the 24-bit file, that noise all went away, leaving only the true high-frequency audio from the song. The same thing happened with every song I looked at. Both sets of files had the same basic audio content, but the 16-bit files all had that random pattern of noise across the high-frequency band, where the 24-bit files had none of that noise. At this point it occurred to me that the noise in the file might be something that occurs only on this album, so I opened up another Audacity recording I had made. This one was of King Crimson's album Red. I had already exported this as 24-bit FLAC files, so I made a 16-bit file of one song to see if it would have the same noise pattern. I opened it up in spec, and sure enough, the 16-bit version had high-frequency noise where the 24-bit version was silent. I did my blind listening test again with these two files, but once again, my ears couldn't tell the difference. It seemed like there was some difference in background noise between the two bit depths, but I just wasn't hearing it. I did some casual research into why this could be, and discovered something that I'd read about before but hadn't given much thought until now. The number of bits in a digital audio file determines how high the signal to noise ratio can be. A file with a lesser bit depth will have a higher noise floor. Monty Montgomery of ziff.org did a great video on digital audio that shows how this works. When we convert a digital signal back to analog, the result is also smooth regardless of the bit depth. 24 bits or 16 bits or 8 bits, it doesn't matter. So does that mean that the digital bit depth makes no difference at all? Of course not. Channel 2 here is the same sine wave input, but we quantize with dither down to 8 bits. On the scope, we still see a nice smooth sine wave on channel 2. Look very close and you'll also see a bit more noise. That's a clue. If we look at the spectrum of the signal, aha, our sine wave is still there unaffected, but the noise level of the 8-bit signal on the second channel is much higher. And that's the difference the number of bits makes. That's it. When we digitize a signal, first we sample it. The sampling step is perfect, it loses nothing. But then we quantize it, and quantization adds noise. The number of bits determines how much noise, and so the level of the noise floor. So the more bits are used in each sample, the lower the background noise will be. As you can see in this chart, a 16-bit file has a signal-to-noise ratio of about 96 decibels, where a 24-bit file has a ratio of 144 decibels. So a 24-bit file will theoretically have a noise floor that is 50% lower than a 16-bit file. So maybe there appears to be more high frequency noise in my 16-bit files because they have a lower signal to noise ratio. I wanted to find a way to measure the signal to noise ratio in the files, so I went online and found this dynamic range meter on loudnesswar.info. It's available for Windows and Mac, as well as in a plugin for FUBAR. I installed the plugin and analyzed both versions of the album. We see here that the dynamic range on the 16-bit version is 13, and the signal-to-noise ratio down here is negative 19.3 on the left channel and negative 17.9 on the right. Well, that's fairly decent, but will it be different on the 24-bit version? It turns out, no. According to the software, the dynamic range and signal-to-noise ratio are both exactly the same. So, why does one bit depth have more prominent noise in the spectrogram than the other? Well, it could be that encoding in 24 bits didn't really remove that noise, just made it lower and less obvious. This, however, doesn't seem to fit with the principle of quantization, which says that a greater bit depth creates a higher signal-to-noise ratio. Now, there might be a limitation in my audio recording equipment that kept the noise floor at a certain level, but that will take more investigation. In short, I'm inclined to say that the difference between 16-bit and 24-bit audio will make practically no difference to your listening experience. The frequency response is exactly the same, since bit depth has nothing to do with that, 
and I wasn't able to hear any difference in the noise floor between the 16-bit and 24-bit versions. The dynamic range meter wasn't able to detect a difference either. So if you're the type of audiophile who really wants to have your music in the most technically perfect, noise-free format available, then 24-bit will give you that. But it's safe to say that you won't notice a difference between 16 and 24 bits when you're listening to your music collection. I should mention though that this is only one test using one set of equipment. It's possible that someone with more advanced audio equipment than me could produce a 24-bit file with significantly less noise than the 16-bit equivalent. So if you can find different audio performance results than me, let me know and I'd be really interested to hear about it. In the meantime, I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.